Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Final Fantasy X walkthrough. Uh, we've just arrived in the... Oh, I don't really know what this place is called. The Mount Gagazette Cave? I don't... I don't know. <laughs> That's about as descriptive as I can get. Anyways, um... It is, uh... I guess there's some new enemies here. Obviously, we've got the Jumbo Flan. That's uh, probably the... One of the more annoying ones, I suppose. Uh, definitely get an armor break on it. And uh, that way, your characters that uh, don't have the piercing weapons are able to do, you know, decent damage. Uh, in this case, you know, obviously I'm still trying to capture everything, so uh, it's really nice to get that uh, that armor break off. Otherwise, you can use magic uh, abilities on them, and that, uh, you know, that I think those do okay. But uh, I prefer, at least I think it's it's been a long time actually since I tried you know, beating one of those in a, in a way other than, I suppose, the way I normally uh, go about it, which is, you know, obviously the armor break and, uh, and then the capture weapons. Uh, anyways, we've got the, what is this next guy, the you behemoth, too much trust in your magic. and uh, I think they've got some fairly decent magic attacks, although I'm not sure here if he's, yeah, he's not even, <laughs> he's not even really good at turn, unfortunately. I guess that's the the benefit to having, uh, you know, decent sphere levels on these characters. And, uh, you know, that way the <clears throat> enemies just don't typically get a whole lot of turns. Uh, anyways, got another mech scouter, or mech battle, whatever. I believe these guys are the same, yeah, this is even the same formation that you find on, uh, Mount Beck, uh, sorry, Mount Gagazette, wow. Or the, the way, I guess, leading up to this area. And then here, we have to go... Looks like we got a job to do, yeah? Uh, with just Waka... If anything should happen in the water... Uh, Riku we'll and Titus. Three. If it gets dangerous, pull out quick. Right. Be careful, okay? All right. Uh, this, there's actually a couple of areas like this where, uh, you know, you're forced to just use the three, uh, or the combo of Titus, Riku, and Waka. Uh, I don't know, this, it's not too difficult, it's pretty typical of, of, uh, I suppose the areas where you ha where you're forced, because there's a couple of areas in the game where you're forced to just use these three. But, uh, I don't know, this, this area is not too difficult. I guess the, the crummy thing here that I noticed, actually, I believe I had a, an instant death, or a, yeah, I guess a, a, a death causing, yeah, there you go, um, weapon on Riku. And I actually wanted to, to capture these, and I guess I, I, I must not have just realized it at first, but, you know, I was one-shotting these guys with Riku, and I was like, what the heck is going on? So, uh, you know, I had forgot unfortunately forgotten that uh, she had that instant death weapon. And again, you know, I just wanted to uh, wanted to get these these uh, enemies in here caught and kind of not have to come back. But, uh, you know, I think I ended up being short on maybe one or two enemies here. So I ended up, uh, you know, unfortunately having to, co having to come back later. But uh, no big deal, I suppose. It wasn't the end of the world. Uh, but yeah, nothing really fancy about these guys. The, uh, the the one enemy there does a yeah, it charges up here, and then I, if I remember right, it does a, uh, I want to say a multi-target ability, but I can't really remember. Again, it's been it's been now quite some time before I, or since I've done this. Oh gosh, yeah, I forgot the um, the piranhas here use a poisoning ability, which is obviously super annoying. Although, uh, the Elbed potions can take care of that, and, you know, that's always kind of a good good way, I guess, to heal up, uh, you know, whenever you're forced to use these three, because I, I guess, you know, Riku still then makes a semi-decent healer. Obviously, uh, 1,000, you know, health to everybody. I mean, yeah, it's not the... It's not, uh, you know, insanely awesome, but it's something. And it's more than enough, I suppose. Uh, anyways, here's the first trial of Mount Gagazette, and... Oh, that's a miss. 
<laughs> so the idea here is to uh, throw the ball and get it, there you go, in between, uh, I don't know, what is it, the shell, I suppose, I don't know, is that what you call that? Uh, but then to hit the button inside, and right after you succeed, obviously the treasure chest appears there, and uh, we're going to loot that and be on our way. Alright, what do we have here? Stone water gem, alright. Oh yeah, so uh, I meant to, you know, just steal here, and yep, there you go. So I mugged that, and her weapon just happened to uh, use the death effect, so I, I again, ended up one-shotting that, that enemy. Ah, uh, that's okay, you know, uh, if you're not trying to capture, that's completely fine, but, uh, and it's actually extremely useful on somebody like Riku, who, you know, doesn't actually get a whole lot of strength. So weapons like that, you know, Stone Touch or Death Touch are extremely useful on those weaker uh, physical characters. Obviously, that's that's not going to be the case forever. Um, you know, one of the cooler things about this game is, you know, at the end of the at the yeah, towards the end of the game, you'll be able to, uh, you know, kind of activate all the sphere nodes with all the characters. So. Um, maybe it's a little lame, you know, that kind of everybody just ends up being the same. Uh, well, semi-similar anyway. Uh, obviously the overdrives are what really separates the characters as well as their celestial weapons. But anyways, um, you know, for the most part, you know, you'll be able to, everybody will be able to do everything. They'll have access to all the different abilities and, you know, stats as well. But, uh. You know, for the t for the time being, weapons like that are are you know kind of useful uh, in cases like that. <laughs> I guess unfortunately now we're going to be capturing enemies for from here until boy, I don't even know. A, lo a long it, I think it goes for a long time. Uh, the behemoth appears to be immune though to. To the instant death effect. So let's bring Orin back in here. Enough. Ooh, molar kill. That's how it's done. That weapon looks actually really, really cool. I guess I never really thought about that. I think it says Beastmaster. I think that's the name of that one. Actually, there's a lot of really, really cool weapons in this game. I always kind of like, uh, you know, when they when they do that. I I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm I'm. Um, I wouldn't say I'm burned out on the old school RPGs where you know you get new equipment but it doesn't ever look any different. That it's that's fine, but it actually is just cool when the when a game comes along kind of like this where, you know, uh, I don't, you know, there's not a whole lot of. Well, I shouldn't say that. There is quite a bit of different a uh, difference in the in the weapon graphics. So I don't. I guess I don't. I shouldn't try to downplay it because there are quite a few different looking ones. Uh, but anyways, it, you know, I, I feel like it's it's kind of cool. Um, I guess it's just a, a, a added little uh, interesting detail, I suppose, in the game. You know, again, not a hundred percent needed by any means, but it is kind of cool when they when they decide to do that. Um, I usually do a uh, spiral cut for Titus's overdrives reason being it's really easy to hit that you know right on uh, or right in the middle of the oh gosh I don't know the bar <laughs> I don't know I don't know how to describe that better but uh, the, the target area there you go uh, so I tend to I tend to stick to that one uh, you know not not that you absolutely have to, but <laughs> I guess that's just my preferred method. Uh, one other thing, I believe, if you finish something off with an overdrive, it will not capture it. So I guess just keep that in mind. At least that's as far as I remember. I don't. I don't think it does anyway. It's. I think I've. I, I think I kind of tried to avoid 
actually the overdrives on any enemies that I wanted to still capture so I guess just uh, keep that in mind all right excuse me here's a second like a uh, watery area I suppose <coughs> And this is another, got another little puzzle coming up. And uh, I guess I, I don't know why, I just kind of noticed this, but the background here looks really cool. Like the this setting with the, you know, the water and I don't know, the, the stairs in the background there. And then I don't know what's coming up out of the, like are those su some sort of support pillars for the cave? I don't know, but it looks really cool. And then this glowing... I don't know if this is supposed to be some sort of LG or something. I don't know. Anyways, alright, so this is the second uh, puzzle, and I think I did this actually wrong the first time. Uh, I don't... I think the second time I got it right, but, uh, yeah, this first, first time is not... I think blue is supposed to be Titus. And, uh... Green is Riku. And then Waka is red. Yep, so that was wrong. Yeah, let's try this. <clears throat> there we go. There we go. All right. So, and then uh, you're gonna want to come back down here. I think there's a there's a treasure chest down at the bottom. I think anyway. <coughs> I think I may have spent a little bit of extra time in this uh, this underwater area just trying to capture you know more of these uh, enemies down here so that I wouldn't have to come back I, I'm, I'm not sure if I did that on screen or off screen I guess uh, <laughs> I guess if I just start swimming around in circles we'll know pretty quickly but All right, where's this treasure chest? there it is okay fortune sphere um yeah, that's actually, for, it's kind of useful. So, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> fortune spheres, and I may have mentioned this much earlier on in the uh, walkthrough, but uh, those fortune spheres are extremely rare uh, until a certain point in, uh, in the game. Uh, and that'll be, uh, you know, unfortunately much later, but... Uh, the, the luck stat is actually extremely important in this game, and I think the first couple times I played, I didn't really realize it. And, um, I mean, it's... gosh, yeah, I, I... I guess we'll just leave it at that. It's one of the most important stats in the game, and later on, you know, it'll be it'll be easier to, uh... Well, I should say, there is a way to farm those spheres later on in the game and unfortunately again you know we won't be able to uh, do that for quite some time but uh, when we do uh, it really kind of changes the game I would almost say uh, basically it, what it means is that you can actually you can drop down your accuracy uh, much lower than you normally would need to and then uh, so it, it affects that it affects your evasion and then uh, it also affects your critical hits. So it actually, again, it's a it's a very important stat, and uh, you know that'll be that'll be something that we will work on uh, much later on in the game. And uh, it, uh, you know, it again, it it comes quite useful. I shouldn't say that it's always quite useful. It's just uh, at the beginning of the game, you don't have there's very few options uh, to to uh, I guess bring that stat up. You know, there's uh, there's only, gosh, I, I can only think of a couple actual luck spheres that you get to add, you know, to the grid. And then on top of that, in all honesty, the ones that are on the grid, there's a couple of luck plus ones, and you don't even want to bother uh, activating those because there's very, very few fortune spheres, you know, to actually activate them. So, anyways... Anyways, long story short, luck is awesome, and unfortunately we can't, uh, 
you know, get get more of it right now, or as much as we'd like to get. <laughs> All right, still capturing these underwater fiends, I see. Gotta be getting close to the capture limit, at least on these, I would sure think. Nope, that one's still good. Oof, no. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alrighty, it looks like we're... Okay, continuing on. Next behemoth to take down. We'll definitely bring Orin back in. Keep plugging away at these guys. Uh, I was gonna say earlier, if I remember right, they have a you know they've got a pretty decent magic stat, and I don't remember if these guys cast. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't even take a stab because I don't remember what they cast now. But uh, no, maybe. Maybe it's something like Fundara or something like that. Anyways, they again, they've got pretty decent magical abilities. Um, that being said, uh, you know, I don't know if I'd worry about it too much. You could probably just take the hit and... There it is, Thundara! What do you know? Wasn't too far off. Uh, anyways, but yeah, you know, do a decent amount of damage. I don't know that you really need to, you know, try to avoid it in any way, like a Null Shock or something like that. I suppose if you've still got the yellow shield from the Thunder Plains, you could toss that on Titus. That would uh, that would absorb those Thundara attacks. Oof! <gasps> ah, yeah! Wow! Look at that. Got the yawns. Got a case of the yawns. It's kind of like a case of the Mondays, except not, except not anything like it. <laughs> oh, mercy! Let's get moving. Um, so you can obviously you can see here now I've got a bunch of sphere levels uh, uh, stocked up I suppose and uh, right around this time I generally get a little uh, I don't know if <laughs> maybe say lazy uh, with you know I guess uh, getting around the sphere grid I think once everybody kind of gets to the end of their respective paths I tend to uh, I don't know yeah, I guess pay less attention to it or be less anal about, you know, taking care of those sphere levels right away. Kind of let them build up and then kind of do everybody's all at once. Uh, and, you know, in all honesty, it's probably <laughs> probably not the best way to go about it, but uh, once once it gets to this point where Titus and Orin are doing, or uh, Titus, Orin, and Locke are doing, you know, most of the fighting, it's kind of like, eh. We'll just leave it as is. I guess the good thing about that, though, too, is if you're if you're not bringing in your other characters, well, that's less people that you have to, you know, use sphere levels on. So, all right, and here we've got the the path is finally uh, finally complete. And here is I think this is the first time we ran into one of these. Is this a mandragora? I believe. I don't know. It's an ochu looking dude. Anyways. Clunk. That's how it's capture done. him and get out of here. Shouldn't say that. Get out of this particular battle. All right, what do we have here? Pep talk. Uh, I don't remember that being very good. Uh, I guess that's that's pretty much the same thing I say though about all the really all the gear in this game. There's really only a few items that like come from chests that are like, oh my gosh, these are so amazing, but. I suppose some, some of them have their uses. There you go, there's another case for the lightning, or the yellow shield. <laughs> Although, I did get lucky with this shield, and this has got um, auto potion on it, which is fairly rare. I think this is actually the first time I've ever got, uh, you know, an item that had that ability on it uh, this early in the game. Typically, uh, it's not until much later that I get those. All right, where am I going here? I'm not sure that uh, that I needed to come this way. This, excuse me. Oh, there's the pep talk. Um, this might be where I. Oh no, I do. Yeah, we do need to go this way. I'm sorry. 
there is a there's a treasure chest or is there two? I forget. Let's find. Yeah, there's two. Okay. What do we have here? Return sphere. Ah, those are nice. And a recovery ring. Hmm. Okay. Ah, oh, weird. You, okay, so those, these three are the only uh, characters that you can even like equip and stuff right now. That's kind of weird. I guess once we get back to the uh, the main area of the cave, we'll be able to check out the recovery ring. Although I suppose I could, you know, if I really wanted to see it, I could have gone into the inventory screen and go to the equipment tab. But apparently, it wasn't interesting enough to. Alright, capture limit already reached, so the piranha looking dudes are all done. Uh, and I don't know if it was, yeah, I may have mentioned this before, but I don't remember if, if it was just maybe my luck in this playthrough or if it's the the difference between the HD remaster and like the, because I, I have, this is again, this is the first time I've ever played on the, uh, the HD version. I'm used to the NA uh, version and, um, you know, it feels to me and I, you know, again, it could be completely in my head, but it feels like I got a lot more equipment uh, as, as drops in this version. You know, again, I'm not, a, I'm not, I don't really know if there's something to that or if that's, again, completely all in my head. I'm not sure, but, um, uh, you know, again, I, I guess I, I ended up with some kind of neat stuff in this uh, or this time around. Alright. That's that. Moving on. I'm sure that won't be the last time, though, that we'll have one of these underwater battles. After all, this is Final Fantasy X, and random encounters are ridiculous. I should say ridiculously often. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Oh yeah, it doesn't, uh, we're getting kind of close to the end here, so it actually doesn't look like I spent any time in the uh, underwater areas trying to, you know, obtain or capture uh, more of these enemies. Is it just me or do these uh, behemoths look super weird? They're, it's something with their fingers or their paws, I don't know. I don't know, are they, are they paws or are they fingers? Or are they both? Paw fingers. Can you have both? Maybe that's not even... Maybe that's not even a thing. Maybe you can't have uh, both at the same time. I don't know. I don't make the rules. Although I should. Alright. Uh, the Dark Flan. I bet I was saying Flan earlier. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad. Anyways, <coughs> this guy, you know, as usual, you're going to want to use the armor break. And, uh, and then just kind of go to town. Oh, white wind for 78. Wow, dude, that's impressive. <laughs> Not. <laughs> just hating. Just making fun of him. You big old puddle of goop. strength. Who is she? Unaleska. Lady Unaleska? In Xanarkin, she awaits the arrival of the strongest. She is still alive? As much as Micah and Seymour. I see. Lost your nerve? No. Nothing frightens me now. Braska would be proud. Then I must not let him down. Alrighty, that is about it for this video. So uh, 
I'm gonna cut the commentary. So uh, I guess like, comment, subscribe, whatever you guys want to do. Hope these guys are helpful though, and I uh, hope you join us tomorrow. All right, thanks for watching.